One of my viewers made a recommendation yesterday and said, why don't you prepare like a PowerPoint chart or some kind of a graph that would show by category of traveler, Balikpayan, Philippine citizen, foreigner, etc., what the requirements are so that it could be easily understood. That was a good suggestion. Took a lot of work on my part, but it also helped me visualize and understand what these ridiculous pronouncements are by IATF. So, I'd like to share that with you. Let's take a look at it. Hopefully, this will make things easier for you. Stay with me. This is the chart that I prepared based on the recommendation of one of my viewers, which is a very good recommendation, and I'd like to share it with you. Let's take a look. The columns we have here are Philippine citizens, so if you have a green card, most likely you still have a Philippine passport. You're a Filipino citizen. Dual citizen of the Philippines, once you become an American, you lose your Philippine citizenship, so you have to apply for dual to recapture that citizenship. So once you have that dual, you are once again a Filipino citizen, just like this guy here, okay? And then who are the Balikbayans? Balikbayans are the Filipinos who became U.S. citizen and therefore no longer a Filipino citizen. But Philippines gives you the privilege of being able to come back as a former Filipino citizen, and they call that Balikbayan. And that will include your spouse, foreign spouse, or foreign children, if your children were born here in the United States, uh, they could or they may or may not be a Filipino citizen, but they will be part of the Balikbayan, your minor, chi I mean your children. Now, visa free, free tourists, these are the tourists coming out of 157 countries that are allowed to visit the Philippines without a visa. Once they get to the airport, they'll be granted a visa at that point to visit the Philippines for 30 days, initial 30 days, but usually extendable. 9A visas are issued to people who are outside the 157 countries. Therefore, they cannot come in visa-free. So they have to get a 9A. And then we have all other visas such as SRRV, uh, 13A visa, and etc. So let's go through it. First thing, first thing is your VAC status. If you are any of this foreigner in including Balik Bayan, meaning former Filipino citizen, if you are not vaccinated, you will not be allowed to enter the country. The only ones allowed to enter the country, no requirement for vax, is or are Filipino citizens. And dual citizen, as I said before, is a Filipino citizen. All right? So everybody is required to be vaccinated. So I said to myself, okay, so why, 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 why do we have that provision about quarantine for five days or what is that for if everybody needs to be vaccinated? Okay, these are the documents you need. We'll, we'll talk about that. We, these are the documents you need. A foreign passport or U.S. passport, not applicable for a Philippine citizen. Of course, once you're a dual citizen, you need to have that with you. By the way, you cannot come back to the U.S. unless you have your U.S. passport, okay? So you have to have that with you. Balik Bayan, yes. And then everybody, of course, is yes. Philippine passport, of course, you still have that. So you have to have that with you. And somebody said, gee, can I use my Philippine passport if it's already expired? I don't know. Someone said, if, if it's still valid but less than six months, you should be able to get in because you're coming to the Philippines anyway. But I wouldn't risk that. I would want to make sure that my passport is always valid for six months. Philippine passport, yes. This is uh, yes also. And then, of course, the rest will be not applicable because you're not Filipino citizen. If no Philippine passport, this will not apply here because you're a Philippine citizen. You will have a Philippine passport. But a dual citizen... If you do not have a Philippine passport, you should bring your dual citizenship identification certificate. I always, always, always recommend once you are a dual, get that passport. 
Now, I would use the dual only if I travel to the Philippines once every 10 years, once every 8 years, 6 years, something like that. But if you were going to travel every year, every 2 years, or even every 3 years, I would get a passport. That, to me, that is security. Okay, that will make sure that I'm able to get in. Of course, none of this will apply. Now, when do you need birth certificate? No, no, and then here it's not applicable. That is when you are a Balik Bayan. Balik Bayan because all you have is a U.S. passport or overseas passport. You have to prove that you were formerly a citizen of the Philippines and therefore you will need an expired or old Philippine passport. Most likely you don't have that anymore. Philippine birth certificate, if you have that, take that with you, bring that with you. Now, one thing that I always say, and I don't see it in writing anywhere, but it's generally accepted by the Philippines, is the U.S. naturalization certificate, because right there it will say that you are formerly a citizen of the Philippines. So that proves that you are a formerly former Philippine citizen. So you take that with you. Now, <clears throat> For the Balik Bayan only, okay, so this is no, no, and then not applicable here. For Balik Bayan people, you need to show relationship to the Balik Bayan. If your wife is Filipino, then you need to show birth certificate to show that you are married to a Filipino or a former Filipino. Uh, same thing with the child, bring his birth certificate to prove that you are the child of a Filipino or a former Filipino. Now, visa entries you know philippines will not require filipinos to have a visa because you have a passport for the balik bayan also no okay they will give you the visa at the time you get into the country now the visa free and that's why it's called visa free is you are not required to have a visa when you enter the country they will give it to you at the airport and you're free to go for 30 days initial which means it could be extended now 9a visa and other visa holders will need a visa and entry exemption certificate or document. That's a pain. <laughs> anyway, that is required. Now let's talk about the other documents and quarantine requirement. This one could be a little bit complicated. First of all, one health pass. That is the initial registration where you, where you will put all your medical records and such, including a uploading your CDC card as a proof of vaccination and also the result of your PCR test that usually needs to be uploaded there too. Now you need that one pass registration I think no earlier than three days before you leave the country. Uh, if I were you I will complete it during that time even though your PCR test is not available yet because PCR test is within 48 hours within two days. Uh, I would complete it but then when they ask you for the uh, PCR test result you say none that's fine and then complete it and then once you get the PCR test everything is already loaded you just upload that you make a change to the uh, registration and you will be good to go that's one health pass what we're not going to, we're not going to talk about one health pass because it's fairly simple you just go to uh, I think onehealthpass.com.ph I think that's what it is and you can register. Now, negative PCR test should be taken 48 hours of departure, no, no earlier. It should be within that 48 hour time frame. And this is applicable to everybody that's two years old. That's the one I can find down right now. I thought I saw something that four years old, but I can't find it, but I found one that says two years old. They keep on changing, so I don't know which one applies. If the child is under two years old, they don't have to go through PCR. If they are over two years old, everybody will have to do a PCR test. Now, for fully, there is no more quarantine, they say. For fully vaccinated adult traveler, okay, you just monitor yourself for seven days and monitor is different from quarantine. Monitor means you can go home. Just observe yourself, check yourself maybe every morning, make sure you have no fever, you're not feeling sick. So just monitor it for seven days and you're good to go. You're vaccinated. Now, here comes the thing. Unvaccinated adult traveler. Do you remember when I said earlier, 
Filipinos, dual, uh, Filipino citizens, and dual citizens are not required to be vaccinated. In that case, if you are unvaccinated traveler, you will be required, let me see, uh, footnote below, hotel quarantine, I guess for five days, then you'll be tested on the fifth day, and then finish your 14-day quarantine at home. Now, it may be six days because if the result is not out yet, I don't think it will be out on the same day, but maybe they do now. I don't know. So five days, technically speaking, five days hotel quarantine, tested on the fifth day. If you're clear, you go if you're negative. Okay. What well, you need that for both this so-called unvaccinated adult travelers. Now, I say here, N-A-N-A-N-A, -A -N -A -N -A, because as I mentioned in the previous screen, you're not going to be able to get in unless you're vaccinated. So you need that. Now let's talk about children. For child under 12 years old, they will follow the status and the protocol of their parent. If a, now, of course, I don't know if one parent is vaccinated, the other one is unvaccinated, which one, do, which one will they follow? But let's say they're both vaccinated, then they will be considered vaccinated. If they're not vaccinated, that means they will have to do five-day quarantine. The 12-year-old under child will be required to follow the same protocol. That's what that means. Okay. Now, again, over here, I said not applicable because they have to be vaccinated, but the child may be unvaccinated. Okay, so if they are if they are vaccinated here, if the children, if the parents are vaccinated, even an unvaccinated child under twelve will be considered vaccinated because they will follow the same protocol, so they'll be able to go home and just do that five day. Uh, home quarantine or not quarantine but monitoring okay now if the accompanying child is 12 to 17 they will be required to do the hotel quarantine of five days and finish the 14-day quarantine at home uh, by the way on the unvaccinated unvaccinated uh, adult traveler i did mention that there is only five day that is hotel quarantine, but you are required to quarantine for five days. By the way, did I mention monitor? No, the monitor is here. Monitor for seven days if you're fully vaccinated. If you're unvaccinated here, you have hotel quarantine for five days tested and then finished a total of 14-day quarantine at home. Same deal with children uh, 12 to 17, meaning even though you're fully vaccinated here and therefore you're allowed to enter the country, if your child is unvaccinated, then they will have to do this. Okay? And also, they will have to do that and also, the one, one of the parents or both parents will have to accompany that 12, 12 to 17 year old child in the quarantine. They will not keep the child and let you go. You will have to join the child between 12 and 17. So that is the reason why, even though theoretically up on top it says everybody should be vaccinated, there is still a quarantine. It applies to Filipinos who are not vaccinated and it also applies to uh, children who are unvaccinated. That's the reason why we still have that. So that, in my mind, that clarified it. Now, here's the next thing. Travel health insurance for Filipinos no requirement for Balik Bayan, Balik Bayan, including the Filipino Balik Bayan, not just the spouse, but Filipino Balik Bayan, you will need travel health insurance. For the visa free, you will need travel health insurance. And then for 9A visa and other visa holders, no. I don't know why that is. I'm not going to question the no here, but I'm questioning why the Balik Bayan will require it. And even the tourists, if they're going to stay there only for 30 days, 60 days, technically, most likely the chance of them getting sick is small, slim. So I don't know why this is. And then on the return ticket, no requirement for Philippine citizen. 
Balik Bayan, it says right now, yes. But when I was inquiring at the Philippine Immigration, they said, until this thing changes, let's now consider for now that it is a yes. So that's a yes with a question mark. And they will notify me when that changes. I have a feeling it's a mistake. Hopefully they correct it now, soon. Because, gee, I'm interested to see what is happening in the Philippines right now. Well, tomorrow by our time when this thing takes effect and everybody will be scrambling for gee I, I didn't know I needed I needed to do this oh gee I cannot get insurance oh, gee I cannot get return ticket this is not practical blah 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 it's gonna be a mess even the airlines are confused right now okay so anyway going back to the return ticket yes they are uh, required from here to here questionable here but for now let's say you're also required even though you're a balik bayan the only thing clear is that filipino citizens don't have to worry about it no travel insurance required no return ticket required for filipino citizen and when i say return ticket it's, it doesn't mean you have to come back to your destination it could be an onward ticket to another location so if in doubt what you can do is it's a waste of money but try to minimize your loss buy a cheap ticket going to Hong Kong or going to some place where the ticket is cheap and then once you're done with your 30 days throw the ticket away but the other question asked is what will I do let's say I have 30 day ticket when I ask for an extension will they ask me for another 30 days good question I don't know the answer to that I don't know the answer to that so if you have a throwaway ticket you throw it away what happens are you gonna buy another 30 they take it again when you extend or 60 days if they extend it for 60 days I don't know so this sort of helped me it's still confusing but it helps me a lot to understand this and I hope you experience the same thing and that's the reason why I am sharing this thing with you I cannot guarantee you that this is going to be 100% accurate or that it's not going to change I can tell you that this is the best information or the best way as I understand these protocols as of today tomorrow things may change maybe this one will change the other question that I had to find out an answer to is one viewer asked me um, he said he has a, a an advantage plan from uh, from one insurance company let's call it Humana if it's Humana and he asked for because of my suggestion that you get something in writing that it says it covers you in the Philippines during the duration of your stay for COVID so that it will not be questioned well he was told that yes you are covered while in the Philippines but we're not going to send you a letter that's how we're going to do it but we're not going to uh, issue a letter that specifically says this and I think the reason for that is they want to have an opportunity to say oh no we will not cover that that's how insurance companies work they don't want to commit to anything that is not written on the policy and the policy says you are covered for emergency and urgent care so the question now is if this happens to them are they going to consider COVID as an emergency and urgent event so I asked that question from the Philippine consulate. We'll see what they say have to see if that will be accepted, uh, not, not mentioning uh, COVID on the uh, policy. Because a lot of people already has policy, either uh, advantage or supplemental. On supplemental, usually you're covered for the first 90 days. Beyond 90 days, you're, you don't have coverage, usually. Unless you get out of the country and then come back, then maybe your uh, 90 days will run again. So this is all I have today. Please do share it with other people. I'm sure uh, pretty soon some, some people will be uh, <clears throat> traveling and uh, I'd hate to see what's going to happen at the airport on the first day of this implementation. So hopefully to the extent there are change, uh, changes to this that has to be made because it's a mistake or misunderstanding or whatnot, hopefully they move right away. Thanks again. Again, do share this with your friends and relatives especially those who are traveling and thank you very much for watching please click like on my video and do subscribe to my channel unless you have already done so make it a great day and god bless